everybody, it's Rain, and welcome to our first episode of our Easter egg extravaganza. We're going to start out with our Sun Yellow Jacquard Acid Dye. I'm going to mix that up with 200 milliliters of hot water. I'm going to turn my scale on. This is just a little powder scale. I'll link it down below. It's from Amazon. Be sure to give your powder a good shake and tap the lid before you take it off to get any excess powder that's stuck to the top down into the jar. Then I just started scooping out acid dye onto our powder scales. I'm going for two grams mixed with 200 milliliters of water and that will give us a 1% stock solution and 200 milliliters of a 1% stock solution. So I don't know if there's a better way but I was having some major spillage happening and you'll see here in a minute it just gets worse and worse. But while I'm having a time with this, I want to let you guys know this before Easter is going to be our Easter egg extravaganza and then the rest of the month is going to be our spring fling. We're going to be devoting the entire month to Easter and Easter themed pastels, all that good stuff and then the rest of the month will be all pastel and spring colors greens and browns and all kinds of different flowers. I've got some um, wonderful inspiration. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button with the notification bell if you are interested in seeing that. So we got to our two grams. We had to add a little bit back into the jar. It was a little over. Make sure you put the lid on your acid dyes tightly and put them away before you get your water out. And we got our 200 milliliters of nice hot water so the powder dissolves evenly into the water. This is very, very crucial. I use hot water with all my acid dyes, but this is especially true for yellow. It is one of the harder colors to work with, so make sure you use hot water. And if you would like, you can add the powder to the Pyrex cup first so that it doesn't get powder in the air. But I was wearing my respirator the whole time and didn't take it off until it was fully dissolved and in the jar. And here I'm adding it to the jar. If you have any excess powder, you can just kind of pour them back and forth a little bit. Stick your label on there and we are ready to start dyeing. I already pre-mixed all my other colors and we're ready to go. This wool has been soaking in citric acid and water for at least 20 minutes. I usually let it sit for about an hour or so. It is 19.5 micron merino super fine wool. So it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful combed top when we're done. I use a restaurant steamer pan to dye my colors in. You really don't need this. It's not necessary. I like to use it because it has other uses, but we are just going to line this with plastic wrap and then roll our wool up with the plastic wrap and steam set it in a pot. I love this plastic wrap that has the little cutter on it. It makes my life so much easier. Highly recommend it. So, I have laid my wool out lengthwise, just like so, and we're going to start on this side. I have 200 milliliters of water in our sun yellow right here. We're going to use this little measuring cup right here. I'm going to go for 10 milliliters of dye to start with. So this is 10 milliliters of a 1% stock solution into 200 milliliters of water. That's how diluted we want this for pastels. I wasn't quite happy with the 10, so I was like, well we're gonna go ahead and go for 15 so I added five more milliliters to that stir that up and then we just poured it right on in the corner there now I love this dyeing technique it's one of my favorites to use and I hope to upscale it in the future so we can do more braids at one time with like bigger containers bigger pyrex however we need to do it now, it is also very important that you press that dye into the wool. This ensures penetration firmly. And after I pressed it all the way across, I was very happy with the penetration of this dye. So if you have problems with white spots on the other side and stuff like that, maybe you should try adding more water to your dye. And I used the same citric acid and water mixture that I soaked my wool in to use with the dyeing so it saves water and we can just reuse that citric acid as well. Next is probably my most favorite color of my entire dye and that would be Dharma Valentine Blush. I did the exact same thing. I used 15 milliliters of a 1% stock solution mixed with 200 milliliters of water. And as you can see, it is a lot more diluted than the yellow was. 
So I decided to flip it over and I added 7.5 milliliters of the 1% stock solution to 100 milliliters of water and poured that on the other side. And of course we press it in after each pour. Next is Lilac from Dharma. 15 milliliters of 1% stock solution into 200 milliliters of water. And give that a little stir and pour that right next to our Valentine blush. I also love Lilac. I believe it is one of my favorites as well. It is such a beautiful shade of purple. So we pressed that in nicely. And it's okay if the colors overlapped a little bit. I think that'll just add to the beautiful effect of the wool. I flipped that over and I added 7.5 milliliters of dye to 100 milliliters of water and added that to the other side to get that penetration. And up next is another gorgeous, gorgeous color you've seen multiple times on my channel. This is Baby Blue Eyes from Dharma. It is a 1% stock solution, 15 milliliters of that mixed with 200 milliliters of dye. So we added that and pressed it down nice and firmly. It's okay if those colors overlap, as I said before. And I flipped over those two braids. I initially wanted to add more colors, but it just turned out that four was the way we were going to do it this time. And this time I added a whole another full 200 milliliters of water with 15 milliliters of dye. And as you can see, it got a little hectic here at the end and it was quite a bit of water there. So I kind of just tilted my pan up to keep that blue dye at the end to make sure that it didn't try to leak all the way down to the yellow on the other side. So I let that sit for just a minute and as you can see, most of the dye got absorbed into the wool, which is perfect. I sprinkle citric acid over the top to make sure that that dye is going to set properly. And just cover up our edges and then add one more piece over the top, nice and smooth, just like so. And we're going to roll it up into a wool burrito nice and gently and I had my steamer pot ready so we just went ahead and put our little burrito in the top steamer basket and I have my heat on medium high and we're going to get that nice and situated and then cover it and I let it steam set until it gets really hot I just wait until I, it's hard to touch it and then I know that it is done it usually takes around 15 to 20 minutes on medium high. So after it got too hot to touch, I turned the heat off and let it sit overnight. Here was our little bit of bleedage down into the steam water. I will add more dye to that and use that as a kettle dye in the future. It is absolutely imperative that you let this cool all the way until it's cold before you take it out of the pot, before you mess with it, before you move it, because it will felt. I found that's the way to keep it from felting is to not mess with it while it is hot. And this footage is sped up, but you can still see how very, very gentle I am being with this fiber to make sure that it does not felt. I got me some cold water and I let it and I let it fill up on the side of the pan. Ivory clear dish soap is my favorite. I use about that much, probably about a half a teaspoon or so, and just kind of pull that over the braid. And I still don't like the water to hit the braid on its own. I will use my hand to break the fall of that water. And then we just gently pull it apart in that soapy water and make sure that all the soap bubbles get all the way through. And then I just press it down nice and gently, yet firmly, to make sure that it goes all the way through. Now, picking it up like this, you got to be very careful and just give it a good squeeze. Make sure that you don't rub the fibers together too much. No agitation. This is the only little bit of discoloration we had. There really wasn't any bleeding. It was just a little bit of excess dye leaving the braid. And that's completely normal. If you do have bleeding, a good way that you can combat that is to soak it in cold water and vinegar or cold water and citric acid for about 15 or 20 minutes. And hopefully that'll reset that dye and it'll make it to where it won't bleed on your next wash if you have a lot of bleeding. But if your water looks like mine, you're good to go, you're golden. So I went ahead and rinsed it twice. I like to make sure my water is fairly clear before I hang it up to dry. 
So I pulled it out gently, gave it one last good squeeze to get any of that excess water off. Poured out our last rinse water. Here is what the two braids look like before drying. Are you guys ready to see the final big reveal through the magic of YouTube? Here we go! Isn't it beautiful? This is probably one of my most favorite braids to date. These two braids turned out exactly the way I had envisioned them and I couldn't be more happy. They are so, so gorgeous. And I believe that it captures the spirit of Easter and Easter eggs in its colorway. So if you guys would like to order this braid, you can go to rainfiberarts.com or you can click the link to my Etsy shop in the description down below. I will have these listed later today. And if they do well, I will have more to come. So don't worry if you go to my page and they're gone. I will be listing more if they sell out. Please use the recipe I gave you in this video and the measurements and let me know how yours turns out. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm almost at a thousand. I'm hoping to do a giveaway. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. And let me know down below any kind of Easter related videos or pastel themes you might want to see in an upcoming video for this week. We might be uploading two videos in the next few weeks for our Easter egg extravaganza. So I hope to see you here next week. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.